Hello, everyone. Welcome to Developing Palettes. I'm Aaron Loomis, and with me, as always, is June Liu. How are you doing, June? Doing good. So today we are talking about the Ventura Case Study 02 Robusto. Uh, cigar is 5 inch by 50 ring gauge. Um, it comes out of the La Aurora factory in the Dominican Republic. Uh, wrapper is Ecuadorian Crojo. Uh, binder is Brazilian Sumatra, and the filler is listed as a multi-country blend. Uh, price point is $7.87, and cigar was released in July of 2017. So June, what was your pre lad experience like? Um, I had a pretty good one. Uh, I thought in terms of the uh, the wrapper, um, you know, like a really good quality, high quality wrapper to it. Um, got a little bit of oil content to it. Uh, a very uniform colored wrapper, uh, which, uh, which typically doesn't happen. Uh, but uh, this one definitely had that. Um, but in terms of the veins, uh, you know, major veins definitely protruded out of the wrapper. Uh, the seams are tight, but it was visible. The bunch of roll felt pretty uh, loose, um, especially on that foot of the cigar. I mean, I could have probably like squeezed that foot all the way in <laughs> and touched my mm -hmm. fingertips. So, uh, head finish off with a well applied deep triple cap. Uh, in terms of the nosy experience, uh, off the wrapper, I got a, a spicy cedar and a barnyard coming through. Uh, smell of the foot, uh, like a mixed nuttiness and uh, a very like a welcoming uh, well, uh, white pepper spice. And on the cold draw, I got a uh, dry wood, cardboard, and a little bit of a, a lip tingling sensation from a uh, white pepper. Yeah, wrapper's light brown, a couple of medium sized veins that ran the length of the cigar on one side of it. Um, seems were pretty well blended in and smooth. Um, now, the cat must have been really deep because when I looked at it, all I really saw was this really small, oblong-looking single cap. Looks like it was a shade lighter. So that cap must have been way down there uh, on that cigar for you mm -hmm. to, to see that there. So I just I didn't even pay attention that far. I just said single cap. But um, the band is really nondescript on this, and basically all the cigars in these lines. It's just really just a white band with uh, black, you know, standard font lettering that just kind of has the case study number on it. So. Um, Aroma from the wrapper was like a distinct dry hay. Uh, foot gave uh, like a nice graham cracker note, um, a little bit of the subtle cinnamon there as well. And the pre late draw was kind of a mix of that graham cracker and hay with, uh, you know, kind of a quick to arrive uh, spicy tingle that I got on my lips. So getting to the flavor, what was your experience like? Uh, off the first third, uh, a pretty pretty good breadth of flavors, I thought. Um, started getting, started immediately getting some like toasted nuttiness, uh, spicy eater and bread. Um, and I st also started getting this uh, floral note, uh, and that floral note really uh, kicked in when, the, when you start uh, retrohaling the cigar. Um, but within just retrohaling in general, um, in addition to that floral note, uh, very you know deep uh, notes of black pepper uh, and a cream mixed nuts. Uh, the finish was really long and lingering, a uh, mix of wood bitterness and toasted nuts. Uh, strength. Uh, was surprisingly too medium full, not that long into the cigar, maybe like a couple of inches in, um, and uh, body was medium. In terms of the second third, uh, well, in terms of the second and last third, uh, I, I put it together in the same category because there was no changes within the last third from the second. So, but then the last two thirds, um, still relatively the same kind of core profile, um, still giving me that. Uh, spice coming through uh, in the sense of like that cedar, that that raw, pungent, spicy cedar, uh, toasted nuttiness and bread. Uh, floor note, uh, unfortunately, entirely gone uh, within both, you know, the mouth draws uh, and the retro that I once had in the first third. Uh, retro still gives that really powerful dose of the black pepper, followed by that mixed uh, cream nuts. Uh, the finish, black pepper spice, uh, in addition to uh, wood bitterness and toasted nuts. Uh, strength, uh, still medium full, uh, and body medium, respectively. So, yeah, the for me the cigar began kind of an interesting flavor. It was kind of what I kind of called a fluffy wood note. I'm not really sure what that is. It just kind of I guess the mouth sensation I was getting with that wood. But I also got a little bit of slight ba uh, black pepper on the finish. Um, a little further in, I got a little nuttiness um, that kind of joined the wood and the, and the black pepper notes. Um, and the retrohale was kind of carrying a little bit of a heavier um, wood note than the, the mouth flavor. Um, at an inch in, that nuttiness went away and the wood became a little bit darker. A little bit of black pepper was still in the background. Um, and then kind of as the third was coming to a close, that dark wood note transitioned to a, more of a cedar with a little bit of a bitterness and that pepper had gone away. Um, and strength is right, right at medium mark for me in the, that first third. 
Um, again, the second third, um, that slight bitterness went away and that cedar became um, slightly bright. Um, and then in a half inch in, that cedar transitioned to oak um, and a little bit of earthiness joined the profile. Um, oak and the earthiness kind of carried over to the retro hill as well. And a little further in that oak and earth were really creating a nice mix um, together with a really long finish. Um, and as the second third was coming to a close, um, a little bit of mustiness joined that oak and the earth. Um, and the strength was still right at medium. And then getting into the final third, um, oak, earthiness, and mustiness were continuing on. Um, a little bit further in, the cigar began to heat up a little bit, which kind of amplified that mustiness a little bit. Um, and then that mustiness uh, finally made its way into the retrohale. Um, at an inch in, um, profile, the profile was continuing on with that oak, um, the earth, and the mustiness. And that's kind of how the cigar finished out for me. Um, and strength kind of just stayed at that medium level the entire way. Um, so for construction for burn and draw, what was your experience like? Um, I, I rated a burn good uh, and the draw very good. So first with the burn, um, you know, overall good. Uh, I, I just had to do a major relight uh, within the beginning of the last third. The cigar just went out on me. Um, and in journal, this is one of those cigars where you feel like, you know, like some cigars, you have a lot of confidence that when you put it on like your, you know, stogie stand or ashtray, that you're just going to keep burning, right? right. Uh, this isn't one of those. It's one of those where you have to like really baby and be like, all right. Keep it going, keep it going, yeah, right? Yeah. Uh, so this is one of those. Uh, ash is fairly tight, a uh, little bit of fiery uh, ash is coming through. Uh, burn line, it was never really sharp, but it was sharp enough that it had to, you know, use the lighter for any, like, for a bunch of touch-ups or anything. Um, and with that draw, uh, very good. Uh, it's a little loose uh, for my liking, but it was, you know, effortless and, um, you know, no real complaints on that. Yeah, for me, the burn was uh, a bit wavy the entire way. Um, needed a touch up at the halfway point as the burn got off quite a bit. Um, but Ash held on an inch and a half increment, so I thought it was um, pretty good. Um, in regards to the draw, I thought it was perfect. Um, I had just the right, right amount of resistance I prefer, so I didn't have any complaints in regards to that. Um, so overall, what were your thoughts on the cigar? Uh, I thought this was a good cigar. Um, you know, within the uh, 26 lines that they have, I think. I think it goes to case 26, right? Uh Anyway, there's a lot. Uh, you know, it's it's uh, it's it's uh, it's a good feeling to know that within all of these case studies that's out, which is essentially, you know, Ventura going to different age rooms and different you know companies and, and, and factories, and saying, "Hey, what do you guys have <laughs> that's left over, or we could just, you know, Costco style like buy the freaking pallet off of." Uh, yeah. Uh, it's, it's good to know that the first one that we review uh, is a good one. Um, you know, it's it's very like for me La Roya ish in the sense that, like especially when I smoke their stuff that is like uh, like Cameroon based uh, or like the Corolla based. Um, you know, you get a lot of like good robust flavors. Uh, mm -hmm. So really rich, robust spiciness, uh, breadiness, and, and you know mixed nuttiness going on. Um, and, and it's a good cigar. I mean, um, uh, I definitely smoke it again. Um, and if, if you're interested to see, you know, kind of, uh, I guess perhaps the palace of Ventura that go out and like try cigars and see what they picked, uh, this is a, this is a good one to go after. Yeah. Just like you were saying, I wasn't really sure what to expect kind of with this, con this whole concept, you know, um, going out and getting cigars that were in the aging room and, uh, you know, they, I've heard, you know, rumblings that, you know, these are cigars that did pretty well. You know, you may recognize them after you smoke them, what they used to be yeah. and stuff like that. So I, I didn't know. I mean, some I, they can't all be like masterpieces because, you know, somebody else would have snatched these things up or the companies right. would have repackaged them or something like that. But, you know, there's probably going to be some good ones in here and some, you know, average ones in there. But you get to see what you get. But like I said, like you said, I mean, it's good to see the, the first and we, we didn't do the first one in the in the series. We did number two. Um but it was a good one, so it was it was good to see that. Um, you know, play, flavor profile was good. Um, it had full flavors, um, so that's good. It was you know very upfront in the flavors. Um, it wasn't groundbreaking in regards to any, any of the flavors that are presented, but the ones that did come through were good ones. Um, so now I'm more interested in making my way through these. I mean, they've only released five, the first five so far, so that's you know a lot to still go through. But um, I'm assuming that their plan is to kind of you know segment these out. You know over the next couple of years or whatever to make that happen. Mm -hmm. But, um, you know, I, I'm interested to see what some of the other ones are. I mean, it's a mix of different factories and things like that. So I think that'll be, it'll just kind of be interesting to see uh, what they were able to, to track down. 
Um, so getting the scores, I gave it a 6.62. You gave it a 6.82. So we're pretty close. How do you think your score matched up? Um, matches very well. I, I rated the overall flavor profile to be good. Um, a, a little bit of a mishap in the sense of the burn, but uh, you know, all things considered, I value the flavor smoking experience way more than you know burn. I mean, I'll, I'll, I'll relight the damn thing like three, four times, and if it has a really good flavor, it'll keep me interested. So mm -hmm. um, it's a good cigar, no doubt. Yeah, I'd agree with you. I mean, we were so close on this score. Um, you know, there was just two two categories that were just slight, you know, variations, one above, one below. So, it, you know, I think we're kind of matched up well. Yeah, good flavors. Um, you know, I, there's, just, there's not anything wrong with the cigar. It's just, it's, you know, it's good flavors. So what I'm interested to find out is I'm interested to find out, you know, people smoke them and see who can who can track down what they think it is. And I'd just be curious to hear what the guesses are down the road, you know, if they think they know what they know what they were in their previous life kind of thing. So um, that'll be that'll be interesting to see. Uh, any other final thoughts from you? Uh, good price point too. Yeah, yeah. This is uh yeah, seven eighty seven is not not a bad price point at all. So well, given the price point and, and the flavors, uh well worth it. Yep, I agree. Uh one other thing is if you just catch this as soon as it posts within the first week, we're doing a contest on this. We're giving away a 10 pack of these in the original box. Um, so be sure to go to the website, developmentpalace.com, and you can enter for that. Um, but if you're just catching this on a video on YouTube, be sure to subscribe to us. Check out the re review, like I said. Um, follow us on all the social media channels, Facebook, Instagram, Twitter, Google+. And you can catch all of our review re re recaps on podcasts, so iTunes, Google Play, and Podbean. Uh, thank you for tuning in, and we will catch you on the next one.